So uh, welcome to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. Uh, we're continuing our series with EHS graduates this summer. So we we were doing some digging and we found a uh, successful EHS graduate. Uh, you're on Wikipedia. So we were looking on the Wikipedia list of famous EHS graduates. So this uh, we have today Senator Clarence Lamb, uh, who graduated in 1999. Uh, he's a state senator in Maryland, and we'll go into a little bit of detail about his background. But uh, he took some time out this morning to talk to us. So, Senator Lamb, thank you very much for joining us on this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience. Sure. Happy to be here. So we asked uh, people to kind of give a little bit of background on themselves, um, just to kind of start off with, just to tell us a little bit about who you are. Um, we'll get into your ninth grade experience a a after that, but why don't you tell everyone what you've been up to since uh, graduating from Emmaus High School in 1999? Sure. So happy to be here. Thank you for the invite again. And uh, this is great. Um, although I do, do want to note that I did not create that Wikipedia page, so I'm not sure how <laughs> Uh, um, so since um, graduating from Mays High School, I went on to college at Case Western Reserve University, which is out in Cleveland. I double majored in biology and political science and then came to Maryland for medical school at the University of Maryland at Baltimore. And then after medical school, you actually have to do some additional training called residency training um, to be able to specialize in a particular field. And so um, I did my residency training at Johns Hopkins and then stayed on as a faculty member where I am now. And you know, and then you were able to get yourself. You were involved in in state local politics, state politics as a uh, representative, and that, now currently serving as a senator. And we'll get into how that kind of progression from biology and political science turned into a career in politics. And you're still a practicing physician at Johns Hopkins, which is pretty cool. But when we always get a new guest on, the first question we always ask them, no matter what they, where they're at, what age, the, all the other stuff is, what was their ninth grade experience like? So we were talking before we started recording about what your ninth grade experience kind of was like you were trying to remember um because you were started you would have started middle uh ninth grade in 1995 which is the same year that i started ninth grade right. as well too so we're trying to remember back a pretty far away here so why don't you let everyone know uh what your ninth grade experience was like at not even at emmaus high school at the time because you were still at the emmaus uh, junior high you were talking about right so at the time um i was in emmaus junior high which now i guess has been absorbed and is now part of the high school um, but ninth grade for us was great because ninth grade we were at the top of the class like this was the um, you know the the best experience there because we were the seniors at the junior high um, ready to move into tenth grade where we're going to be at the bottom of the totem pole again. But ninth grade, looking back, it was great because um, I just remember it being a, a fun time, um, a time to be able to uh, learn and you know have a lot of friends at the time and be able to um, you know experience different things, to uh, learn more about topic areas that we were interested in, have some choices in classes, which up until elementary school, you didn't really, or up until um, high, junior high, you didn't really have. You were kind of told what you had to take for the most part. And um, to have that choice was great. Um, you know, just look back at, at times where, you know, things seemed <laughs> easier and simpler and more straightforward. I guess I'm dating myself. There were no cell phones at the time. And so things were, um, you know, just, just you built relationships and you talk to people um, and, you know, look back at times where, um, you know, it was just, it was great to be able to learn things and, and just try different experiences and such. So yeah, I really enjoyed my time there to me as high school. I mean, so was there something in your ninth grade year that kind of led you down the path of where you decided to go with biology and political science, or maybe even in that 10th grade year, your first year in, in like, quote unquote, the high school. But was there something during that, like, t couple year time period that kind of led you in the direction that you decided you wanted to go down? Yeah, I did really enjoy some of my social studies classes back then. Um, you know, we had, I remember one of my social studies teachers in uh, junior high, his name was Mr. Martin, and um, he, you know, had us actually memorizing all the different parts of the world. We would, um, you know, basically, <laughs> I'm dating myself again, he had overhead projectors. <laughs> we would, um, he would sketch out like different, the capitals of the world, and we would get tested or quizzed on that. Just enjoy 
enjoyed like learning about where all these places were that you never heard of and he would show pictures and you could kind of experience them through a little bit of that but you know as a kid you always dreamed of being able to visit some of these places on your own uh later on really enjoyed that part of it and learning kind of civics and how basic government works um that kind of led to my interest in in taking ap government which at the time i think we could take either in 10th or 11th grade but um might have been 10th grade but um you know it was just really an interesting course to learn about things that you were like hearing on tv back then or about elections that were taking place that you didn't understand much about as a as a kid um because you never had to vote except when your parents would bring you in to vote so it was really neat to try to understand and learn some of that uh behind you know what actually takes place when people pull the lever um and so you know just look back on that time as really you know, an experience that I learned a lot from and took away, um, you know, a lot from to be able to kind of build my interest in in kind of politics later on. Was there anything that you were involved with as in a club or activity at Emmaus that kind of helped you? Because we talk a lot with our guests about um, the things that they're involved in, in addition to their schooling. Um, when I was doing a little internet searching, the only thing that I could find, and believe it or not, this came up, was that in December of 1997, you had a perfect score at the PA Math League uh, event, which Emmaus was the highest scoring team at the time. So other than that, um, maybe thankfully for you, and then there's some listings of some scholarships that you won when you graduated. There's not a lot out there from your high school career. I guess that's because we were, you know, before internet, before all the different recordings right. of different stuff. But um, other than your Math League performance, is there a club or activity that you remember from uh, Emmaus High School as kind of like giving you the opportunity to further that knowledge and further that, um, you know, drive to learn about different stuff that you you are interested in now? Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, Model UN. I assume there's still Model UN um, activities there. Maybe not. But I think it's, yeah, I think it is. And I, I'm not sure if it's under a different name now, but I know they, they did do something like that. Yeah. They did do that. Yeah. So, um, and as part of that activity, we were all assigned different countries and we basically had to do a deep dive into learning about the background and history of those countries and really put ourselves in the shoes of someone who was representing that country, who had some familiarity with it. And I think what it really taught me was that um, to actually learn how other people feel and how they think and why they behave, you have to put yourself in their shoes. That that can be sometimes really difficult to do because um, you know you may not understand their culture or their background, their history, their heritage, and um, being able to flip that switch and be able to um, put yourself in their role and understand why they think the way they do, I think was really a useful exercise, especially in in um, you know, policy making, lawmaking, and politics, um, you have to be able to figure out how to work with other people and um, being able to put yourselves in their shoes and seeing who they represent um, helps bring that together and find at least some type of common ground that you can work from. Yeah, it's really interesting. And it's, you know, you, you learn those skills in that club and then you were able to apply it, you know, several years later as you kind of progress through your through the things that you were involved with. Um, I, I did, uh, as I was telling you before we started, I did try to reach out and see if any of the teachers that are currently at Emmaus remembered you, but uh, no one responded back to that. But I did get some information from a classmate who's now a current teacher at Emmaus High School, uh, Miss Knight, who is one of our biology teachers. Uh, she said you guys grew up together and rode the bus together. Um, and her quote about you was that you were a great guy, very intelligent, top of the class, always very humble and modest. So so do you think that accurately describes how you were in high school or is she kind of remembering, remembering it slightly different? I think she's right. Although obviously I have a bias, but I think she's right. Um, <laughs> so it was, and, and we kind of grew up in the same neighborhood together. So it was really interesting to see that she has um, really stuck around and, and also you know, has helped training the next generation of uh, students there at, at Emmaus. It's really great to see, um, you know, people that, continue to make an impact on um, those who are, um, you know, growing up and students as they go on to do, um, you know, things later on too. So, you know, credit to her and, and appreciate that. That's, uh, I think that's accurate, but, you know, I'm, you know, to, uh, <laughs> to really expound on that very much. So, um, so 
you know, looking at where you went after after uh, your time in Emmaus, you went on. You you graduated with a double major, undergraduate. Then you went. You were talking. You went to medical school. Medical school. You're at Johns Hopkins. Um, but as I was looking through all the different stuff that you did, the one thing that kind of jumped out to me was that in 2005, 2006, you were the student body president at the University of Maryland, Baltimore at that time. Was that kind of, I was trying to draw the line of like where you decided politics was gonna be kind of what you got into in addition to medicine. Is that, did you do any of that kind of like student government stuff in high school? And was like your uh, interest in that, like during the time at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, was that kind of where you first started to see like, hey, if I get involved in a certain way, I can make changes in, in a lot of different ways, not just like medically, but you know, policy as well, too. Right. I actually credit it with going back to Emmaus High School as to, you know, where my interest kind of developed from. I think I think at the time I could take uh, U.S. history, AP U.S. history was like the first AP class, I think, that those of us that were going through high school could take because I think it was open to 10th, grader for, 10th graders for some reason at the time. And so really enjoyed that as to learn like how the country came into being and what brought us to, you know, where we are now and some of the challenges that we face. Um, and then from there decided to take AP government, which I think was probably 11th grade course. Um, and always look back on those as like really the foundational, um, you know, learning and training that I had to really build my interest in, in, in politics and in policy. Um, and that kind of spurred my interest when I went to college to um, double major in political science and biology. Biology was more because I was pre-med and pre-med is not a major. And so, you know, yeah. a couple more courses to get a bio major. But uh, political science was always more of my own personal interest. Um, and so I remember taking a course on um, um, U.S. foreign policy and um, because that wasn't something that I learned much from in high school and really enjoyed it. And from there decided, well, why not try to get this double major and did. Um, but that's where I also got involved at really in student government at Case Western um, and was elected as one of the class representatives, um, served in their student body uh, government, and then, um, you know, carried that on into medical school too, which is a little unusual because most of my classmates weren't really interested in policy or politics, um, you know, medical school because they were much more science focused and based. Um, but I felt like it was important to kind of keep a, an understanding in both, um, particularly as a physician, you're there to help people. And while you can help people medically and clinically um, improve their lives, there are other there are a lot of other things that you can do to help improve people's lives too outside of the walls of the clinic and the hospital. And so that was why I decided to also carry on my interest in and politics and policy making. I'm sure that's given you a unique perspective now, especially with everything that's going on with, you know, with with COVID-19 and the medical side, but also the policy side. I know you're currently serving on a, a committee um, in Maryland on the joint COVID-19 response legislative work group. I, ha I wrote that down. I had to get that exactly the way that it was there. But um, how has that impacted like what your work is currently now? Like I'm sure having that medical knowledge and having that policy background has been pretty influential for you to be able to be a voice of of, of reason in the state of Maryland right now? Yeah, certainly as the only physician in the Senate of Maryland, um, you know, you bring a unique perspective to um, the legislature. And, um, you know, it's really in, in times like this, that perspective is really important, right? Because there are yeah. many that don't understand science or the healthcare system. We all, as legislators, bring different perspectives and backgrounds and experience in our jobs to share that and impart that knowledge with our colleagues there. Um, at times like this, um, understanding the science of the, the coronavirus is really important um, and how it spreads and the public health concerns and how it can strain our healthcare system, um, you know, are all really critical, important pieces to understand. And so it's really great to be part of this uh, legislative work group focused on COVID-19 because this is kind of bread and butter of what we do in the healthcare um, side and as a physician. Um, but, um, you know, what we also want to do is share our knowledge with other people and particularly in times like this, that's really important to do. And what would you say, like uh, for people, for students that are listening or parents that are listening, or just people that are trying to learn a little bit about maybe I want to decide on what to do in my future. Like, 
what kind of advice or tips would you give to students that have these multiple interests and, and how to kind of develop that as they kind of go forward in a unique way that you were able to take your love of science and your love of, you know, politics and, and history and kind of meld that into a career for yourself? Yeah, so my advice to students is really to find something you love and um, or areas that you love to work on and learn from and continue pursuing them. That, um, you know, what you're learning at Emmaus High School really sets the foundation for you to be a lifelong learner. Um, regardless of whatever field or area you go into, um, you know, you'll continue to learn throughout your lives. And being able to do this, um, you know, is really important because the world is changing so much, right? And so, you know, it's really important for you as um, a student to find those areas that really interest you, whether it's history or science or math or English, and, um, you know, find a job that you can do in those areas that you really enjoy doing. Because it's going to be, um, you know, a long career that you will have that um, whatever you choose to do in. And so you have to find something that you really enjoy. Because what I found is that if you are, if someone is working in an area that they really just don't enjoy, eventually they'll work their way around to a different role or a different position, probably in line with what they wanted to or enjoyed to begin with. And so, you know, while I really did enjoy the science and the, you know, learning about medicine, I also enjoyed, um, you know, politics and policymaking and, you know, was able to blend those two together, to bring those two areas together. And, um, you know, I, that, that I found to be really rewarding and satisfying and encourage others to find, you know, those pathways forward too. Okay. Well, Senator Lamb, thank you very much for taking some time out this morning to chat with us and to kind of give us a little bit of update here. Is there anything else that you would, you know, reminiscing on your days at Emmaus High School or just kind of looking back on that time frame as a ninth grader, you know, you gave some good tips there for kids to pursue their interests, but as any uh, advice for like students that are currently in ninth grade and kind of like that experience and that the way that you kind of uh, came into Emmaus High School and kind of decided on your path, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, ninth grade, um, you know, particularly now since um, ninth graders are coming in new to Emmaus High School, um, you know, I think what's important is to, um, you know, use the independence that you have now in high school to, to find others that, um, um, you know, that, that can be, that you can build relationships with and friendships with and hopefully serve that as, you use that to serve as a foundation for, um, you know, other experiences that you have in the future. Um, you know, you're now given a level of independence that you just never had before. And it's important to be able to find your own voice, find who you are. Um, and those early years in high school really give you the opportunity to do that um, and to figure out what direction you want to go later on and to have some of those foundational experiences that you can always look back on and reflect on with some fond memories as we are now. Um, and so, you know, use that time wisely because um, the first year of high school is when you build all those relationships and, um, you know, people pretty quickly fall into, you know, the group that they um, like to hang out with or um, others that they connect with. Um, but, you know, those early, that early time period during ninth grade really gives you opportunity to kind of, you know, with everyone coming together and everyone being you, um, you know, to, to find others that, um, you know, you want to continue to build relationships and, and your years in high school with um, moving forward. So, you know, keep an open mind. I think there are, um, um, you know, particularly these days with all the challenges that we see, it's great to be able to experience, um, build experience with different people and, um, you know, find your own voice and things. So I encourage people to do that. Well, thank you very much, Senator, for joining us this morning. Um, I hope you enjoyed reminiscing and thinking back to your time at Emmaus High School. And um, thanks so much. And we'll uh, look forward to looking to see how you progress in the future and, uh, you know, the great things that you're doing for your for the state down there, state of Maryland. So thank you very much for everything. Sure. Thank you.